Hi, everybody. My name is Paul Girard. I'm a financial aid consultant for the American Dental Education Association. We hope that the information in this short interest rate primer will put you in a position where you understand how the interest rates work on the student loans that you'll be taking out as you finance your dental school education. In this primer, we're going to cover a number of items. First of all, some important reminders about interest rates. We'll also talk about interest rate capitalization. We'll talk about how the rates actually work on federal, campus-based, and private loans. We'll take a brief look at a recent rate history and what the interest rates have done over the past few years. And then we'll close this short presentation with some tips on how to reduce the impact of the interest rates, especially if they're high, and how to reduce the impact of capitalization. Now, interest rates on federal loans have been fixed since the 2006-07 academic year. Prior to July 1, 2006, interest rates were variable on federal student loans. They actually changed every year on the same loan, but for the past nine years, interest rates have been fixed on federal loans. And once they're set, they do not change. One of the reasons it's important to understand how the interest rates work and what the interest rates are is that the majority of the loans you are likely to be taking out for dental school are going to be what we call unsubsidized loans, meaning while you're not required to pay the interest on the loans during school, and any kind of grace period you have after school on the loans, interest is going to be accruing during those periods of time and no one will be picking up the interest for you. So you're going to be responsible for it at some time. So very important you understand what the interest rates are. The AAMC, a D, a dental loan organizer and calculator called DLOC, which is a terrific resource for you. We will reference that a bit later it actually uses the current interest rates. It's always updated to reflect the current interest rates. And it also has a link online to the federal interest rate chart. So at all times, you can figure out what the interest rates are on your federal student loans. You can access the AAMC ADEA Dental Loan Organizer and Calculator at www.aamc.org slash go dental. Now, you never want to talk about interest rates without talking about capitalization and capitalization policies. Capitalization is simply where the accrued and unpaid interest on unsubsidized loans at some point is added back to the original principal amount borrowed, and that obviously results in a higher principal balance. And then interest starts accruing, depending on the situation, on that higher principal balance. If you've heard the phrase interest on top of interest, this is what we're talking about. Obviously, the less often capitalization happens, the better. Now, in general, there are three times when capitalization occurs on federal loans. Once at repayment, and we have it highlighted there in red because that's the time that we wanna be absolutely sure folks are aware of. This would be, for example, on a direct unsubsidized loan after the six month grace period. So once at repayment, it also happens when borrowers who are repaying with an income driven repayment plan, such as income based repayment known as IBR or the newer version called pay as you earn or pay. It happens when borrowers using those plans no longer qualify for the lower payments available in those income-driven repayment plans. There's more information on that on the IDEA website. Then the third time that interest can capitalize is when there is what we call a status change. This could be someone who moves from, for example, a period of deferment into forbearance. That's an example of a status change. So important to not only know the interest rates, but to also know the capitalization frequency of the loans that you have. Now, in terms of the federal direct loans, these are loans that are coming directly from the federal government. This would be the direct unsubsidized loan that some folks still refer to as Stafford. 
and also the direct plus loans that for graduate and professional students, some folks still refer to as grad plus. The rates change on new loans dispersed on or after July 1 of any given year, and then they remain fixed for the life of the loan on those individual loans. I actually call the interest rates variable fixed rates because the rate changes on new loans every year. In other words, it varies from year to year, but once it's assigned to a new loan, that loan has that rate fixed for the life of the loan. What that means is you could, for example, borrow four different direct unsubsidized loans while you're in dental school and have four different interest rates, one on each of those different loans. Now, the maximum rate that can be assigned on new direct unsubsidized loans is 9.5%, and the maximum rate that can be assigned on new direct plus loans, once again, some folks call those grad plus loans, is 10.5%. So once again, rates change on new loans dispersed on or after July 1 of any given year, and then they remain fixed for the life of the loan on those loans. Some schools have what we call campus-based loans. These are loans that are awarded through the school. It actually looks like the school is the lender. And in the case of some institutional loans, the school actually is the lender. That's where the funds are coming from. Some examples of campus-based loans include Perkins, Health Profession Student Loans, Loans for Disadvantaged Students, and once again, some schools have their own institutional loan funds. The interest rate on Perkins, Health Professions, and Loans for Disadvantaged Students is 5% fixed. And by the way, these loans are interest-free to borrowers during school, grace, and any periods of deferment. Be sure to check with your school to see if they have any campus-based loans available for you. Now, interest rates on private loans can be fixed. They can also be variable. It depends on the lender and it depends on their policies. And in some cases, it depends on which is your preference. You may be interested in a fixed rate that cannot go up or down. Others of you may be more interested in a variable rate. Typically, the initial variable rate is going to be lower than a fixed rate on a private loan. Very important that if you choose a private loan and you choose a loan with a variable rate, be absolutely sure you know how often the rate can change. The maximum rate that's allowed for more than a few private lenders, it's 18%. Be sure you know the impact of a rate change on future payments. How is that going to affect your future monthly payments? You also want to find out on a variable rate if the rate changes from school to repayment and then possibly during any periods of postponement if you ever need to postpone your loans. Very important for you to find that out. And as we mentioned earlier, very important for you to find out the frequency of capitalization on your private loans if you take out a private loan because these are unsubsidized. We would always encourage you to speak with the professionals in the financial aid office before you consider taking out a private loan. Now, this is a quick snapshot of the interest rates over the past four years, including the current 2015-16 academic year. We're recording this presentation in July of 2015. The interest rates on the direct unsubsidized loans, also referred to by some as Stafford, for this year dispersed on or after July 1, 2015, the interest rate is 5.84% fixed, and you'll notice that the rate on any direct plus loans dispersed on or after July 1, 2015 is a full point higher, 6.84%. If you look back starting with the 2012-13 academic year, you can see that the rates went down the following year. 
then they went back up in the 2014-15 year, and then they went back down again this year. But remember what we said about the caps on each of these loan programs. The cap on the direct unsubsidized loan, the rate can be as high as 9.5%. And for direct plus on new loans, it can be as high as 10.5%. Now, finally, we wrap this short presentation up with some tips to negate the impact of the interest rates, especially if they are high, and how to negate the impact of interest capitalization. The first is quite obvious. Never borrow more money than you need. And don't assume that you need the full cost of attendance. Work closely with the financial aid office to be sure that you never borrow more money than you need. If there is a resource that you have available, possibly family, a partner, a spouse who can help out a little bit, see if you can pay the interest on the unsubsidized loans before it capitalizes at repayment. This will save you some money in the long run. If you make any voluntary payments and when you enter repayment, if you overpay aggressively, work with your loan servicer to target those voluntary and additional payments against the highest rate loans that you have. And finally, when using aggressive repayment, you can shorten the repayment period and thus reduce the overall interest cost. Once again, paying faster helps you shorten the repayment period, and that most definitely will help reduce the overall cost of the loan. So some common sense tips to negate the impact of interest rates and capitalization. We hope the information in this interest rate primer has been helpful to you, and we would remind you that responsible borrowing in dental school will help lead to responsible repayment after you graduate. Don't forget the AAMC ADEA Dental Loan Organizer and Calculator, DLOC, available at aamc.org slash godental, a great resource that does reflect the current interest rates and should help you as you manage your student loans throughout dental school and after you graduate.